Hey, Abhishek, thanks for reaching out. Um, I will quickly try to review your resume and your GitHub portfolio. I'll pretend to that you applied for a job and then like, uh, as if I was the hiring manager that has to review your application. So let's start with your, um, with your resume. So it looks quite clean, clean. that's nice. Uh, you start here with a skill set, um, which is also good. It's not too overloaded, not too many technologies, but uh, the important ones are here. Um, the internship is good. It's your work experience, basically. So it's good that you mention it uh, at first. Here, the last line I like a lot because it uh, shows the impact that you had on the project. Since this is an internship, I'm not sure if this was only you or if the team was also involved. So it's always a bit tricky. Like if this was a team effort, then please mention it and uh, that you were part of the team. Otherwise it looks a bit strange, I guess. Um, yeah, apart from that, D3 is a nice and a bit complex technology. So good that you mentioned it here as well. Um, then the education section, it's good that you mention it here because you uh, have a degree in computer science, so very important. Uh, then the next two, it's your school education. I'm not sure if this is so important. You might just uh, remove it completely or um, just merge it into one or like delete the last one. Nobody's interested in that anymore, I guess. So the most important is the, your university education, and that's here. Um, the other stuff is just taking up space and um, yeah, adding clutter uh, to the resume. Um, coming to your personal projects, this is also good. You have quite a lot of them, so that's good. I assume this is the most important one. Um, I'm not sure if somebody would read it, but yeah, React, Node.js, GraphQL, okay, nice. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the GitHub portfolio. Okay, I like that you have this picture here because it's like very friendly and uh, as a hiring manager, I would be, uh, I would want somebody who fits into the team and is like, a friendly person you can be friends with the with the other teammates so that's good um you actually have the opportunity to create a profile readme um you can search for it on google but then you you basically have a like a landing page here that uh, describes something about you which can be nice uh, you have already pinned some repositories which is also good so here's the amazon clone and uh, i assume from your repository, or from from your GitHub portfolio, that this is the most important one. But here on the uh, resume, the social media app is. So uh, I would give priority to this for now. Uh, but yeah, maybe you can sort it out and just like put the most important one uh, at the top. So let's check out the social media app. Okay, um, this looks pretty empty, not much information here. The folder structure is like not super common. I'm not sure what this is. GraphQL might tell me that this is a server, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what this is, which is not a problem, but uh, just add some cognitive flow to me. Then, the about section is empty. You can actually really nicely describe your project here and also add a link to the deployed version. I can see that you have the link here, which is good, but maybe move it to the about section. And uh, yeah, the readme itself is pretty empty. You again, have some social media application, which yeah, it's uh, obvious by now. The technology you also mentioned already on the resume. Um, which is okay, you can repeat it here, but uh, like you have a chance here to present you yourself and the project and uh, you will see in a bit like, it's pretty hard to navigate the project like this. So 
you can take the opportunity and uh, add some more information here. Um, so since there's not much to read, I would uh, either start digging into the code or have a look at the commit history. Let's start with the commit history. Okay, update readme, update readme. It's like, yeah, finishing up the app, like post changes, adding new posts, okay, authentication. Yeah, it looks okay, I guess. Um, the commits might be a bit large. So 20 changed files. Uh, this is the complete initialization of the front end, I guess, with create React app. Yeah. Um, maybe you can try to do a bit more, a bit smaller commits, but at least you like you have good uh, descriptive commit messages. This is good. Let's see this commit. So, so seven change files is not too much, but. Uh, you can, it's also uh, seems to be about this single post and seems to be in the post detail page. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't look bad. Then let's check out the deployed version here. This will be helpful. Okay, nice. Uh, in an earlier review, I did this take a couple of times. The loading bar was actually showing for quite a long time, so you might check why this is happening. It might be, since it's uh, pretty fast now, uh, it might be a cold start time or something of uh, of a function. Um, yeah, but now it looks pretty nice. Uh, not sure what I can do here, but probably here, comment and like, so let's see. Okay, it's sending me, okay, here's actually the post detail page. Um, that's a bit hard to find because it says comment, you could make the whole card clickable, so it's, it's obvious that uh, there's actually a post detail page, I missed this earlier. Um, this one, yeah, um, it's always a bit problematic if you require a registration for your application because I wouldn't take time and register my my email address here now. Um, it's always best if you just fill this out with a like a pre-created user and uh, uh, password. So I can just hit the login button and uh, don't have to bother with inputting a lot of information here. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, without registering a new user, it's actually hard to do anything here. Um, yeah, so let's keep it with this. Now let's have a look at the code. Again, since I don't have information here where I should look at, um, I just have to pick some files. This is index.js, okay. This is the server, yes, it's suspected. This is more server code. Apollo server, some GraphQL API, probably MongoDB, okay. Um, yeah. Then let's continue with the client. Here's probably the front end code, and yes, we have the create React default readme. Again, this is a good opportunity to actually describe what the front end is doing. Um, you can also include this information, of course, in the, uh, inside the main readme here and just remove this readme, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, okay, let's click here. The magic starts probably here, much, okay. App.js, yeah, okay. What I can already see is that you have clean code here, so everything is no no funny stuff with indentation or um, like mixed styles or something. This is pretty nice. You have some global CSS 
Uh, let's have a look at that in a moment. And you seem to use semantic UI, so a UI library. Um, I would rather recommend to write custom CSS because that's what you will do on the job probably. Um, like custom branding is very important for, for companies. So um, they have designers preparing custom designs and then the developers have to implement it. Um, so in that case, you will write uh, custom CSS and um, won't be using a UI library. UI libraries are also like some companies may use them, but then it's not clear what they use. Maybe Material UI, maybe Semantic, maybe Bootstrap. So uh, it's a risk to to uh, to choose one option here um, because it's not a very universal skill. Um, you also have context, which is nice, and a few routes here. Yeah. Okay. Menu bar. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Then let's see the first have a look at the app CSS. Okay, yeah, so not many styles. I can't really see if you have a good idea of CSS. What I can see is here important, this is code smell. And um, if this is really required, then add a comment explaining why. Um, yeah, that doesn't look so good, but apart from that, it's okay. Um, so let's start with pages, maybe login. Okay, you have to use mutation here, some context, which is good, uh, state, okay. Um, use form, what's that? So it's a custom hook, okay. Yeah, why not? It's, it's really nice that you use GraphQL. I like that a lot. Um, you have a loading state here, okay. Okay, yeah, looks clean. Again, like it, it would be nicer if you had some, some custom inputs here, but um, it's also not super important now. Not sure why objects is uh, arrows is an object here. Maybe you could just add a uh, here. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Then what about single post? Okay. Sorry for the cries in the background. Um. Yeah. This also looks good. Set comment, not sure how this is probably the, uh, the input field value, I'm correct. It's a blurred here, okay. Um, yeah, this looks good. Post markup, not sure why this is required, but let me guess you return post markup at the end of the component, yeah. Okay, it would be nicer to just return early here. So replace this code here with a return statement. And then it's actually clear that uh, this is all it's done. And if get post is not set, then the component is loading. I guess actually uh, use query may also um, provide a, a loading state. Maybe this one, not sure. Um, and then you can, if you, replace it with return. You can also remove the else statement here and just return here again. This makes it much clearer and I don't have to wonder, hey, what's uh, post markup and oh, okay, here at the end of the line, it actually returns without doing anything else. Um, but yeah, okay, this uh, console log statement, this is, mm, yeah, I would remove it. Not sure why it's there or maybe you forgot to implement something here. Here you could say trim.length, uh, but that's okay as well. Um, yeah. The small maps fun uh, map function, you, 
use. I always forget what this is called, but uh, it's nice to check if something is defined. Actually, I'm not sure why you. Is this required? You could also just say data question mark dot get post question mark dot map. So I'm not sure if you understand the operator here completely, but it's also a minor detail. Okay, let's head back. Uh, so this was the server side, right? You implement, you import here some GraphQL stuff. Okay. GraphQL, let's see. Okay. So, of course, like production applications will have many more types. So, might be a good idea to just split this out into uh, several files or several type definitions, but also not important here for this small use case. Um, here, what do we have here? Comments, let's see. Yeah. Looks okay. Posts, yeah. Okay, you have an authentication error here, action not allowed. Um, not sure why you, ah, okay, you check for the username. If that's correct, okay. Yeah, okay, can you use, uh, Single weight syntax, which is also nice. Not sure why you don't use import statements here. I know it's not uh, uh, probably because it's not natively supported by Node yet, but um, also not super important. Let's check how you did the authentication part. Okay, I can see bcrypt and JWT here. So you use JSON web tokens and you generate a token here and probably return it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, yeah, I suspected this. So you encrypt the password in the register function, probably, the data register input. Yeah, here you hash the password and save it to the database. This is like, in a production application, I wouldn't do that. Here might be fine. Uh, in an interview, I would probably ask how you, like, if there's a risk, because, like, the risk is that authentication is not easy to implement, and uh, you can easily do something wrong. If you store the databases, you as computer computing power grows, you might need to rehash the, um, the passwords, so, like, uh, so they don't are too easy to to, uh, to crack. Um, so usually I wouldn't recommend to to do this yourself, but rather go for something like Auth0, um, Okta, Firebase, Cognito. There there are many uh, services out there that actually uh, provide you with good uh, authentication services. Okay, yeah. All in all, I would say this looks pretty good. Let's check if you have something like scripts. Okay, this is, it's always nice to have tests. Like uh, most junior developers don't know how to test. So if you know how to write tests, please add some. It's uh, like super impressive, I would say, and uh, makes you look a lot more professional because like a lot of senior developers, hiring managers, they will care for, for tests and uh, if you are already comfortable with doing that, then uh, that's a big plus. Um, also, linting would be nice. Here's no linting. Although your code looks pretty clean, so maybe you use already pretty or something. Um, but uh, here's also nothing. Tests, but I, I didn't see tests. If you if you have tests, please mention them in the um, in the readme moment there are other nicer libraries i guess date fns or i'm not sure uh there there are some some lightweight libraries for uh dates but yeah all in all looks pretty good from 
apart from some minor things. The main part that, as I said, that, that I would change here is add something to the about section and edit the readme to have much more information like technical decision, your thought process, what could be improved. Um, this shows like this lets the hiring manager tap into your your thought process, shows your communication skills. If you uh, have, if you add a section about what you could improve if you had more time, then this is really nice because it shows that you can self-reflect, that you can critique yourself, that you can be a team player in the end. Um, yeah. Then maybe some the section where you actually point me to the to the code that's important. Uh, or we explain the folder structure, the architecture behind this. So all, all of this is super important and will make the job of the hiring manager a lot easier. And you, you saw that I was just randomly opening files and maybe I missed something, maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe you have some bad parts in the code that you don't want them to detect by, by chance. Uh, so yeah, just show me what you have and where to look at. It's also nice if you work on branches, you don't seem to work on branches here, uh, only main branch and pull requests. You can also use issues to to, uh, to track problems or uh, track your, your tasks. It's also nice and shows professionalism and structured approach. Uh, pull requests are used in basically every team, I would say. If you, if you have team members, they will review your code and pull requests. Um, yeah, I guess that's enough. You can also see that I only checked out one app. M maybe I would take the time to check out a second, but not more so put these into order, like which is the most important one and the most impressive one. So just put that to the top also here in the in the pantry repositories. Okay, uh, I hope this was helpful and um, let me know if you have any questions. Bye.